Good morning, good day, and good night. This is our Tom Betts, and I have acquired a taxi. Welcome to Living with the Taxi. All right, now here with Art Thomas, who has a taxi. What specific one of taxi do you have? I have acquired from a stroke. From a stroke? To the cerebellum. All right, so we're going to ask you some questions about a taxi. Ready? How long have you had a taxi? Um, over three years, but uh, the first year and a half, they didn't know what I had. The hospital that I went to didn't diagnose me with anything. It wasn't until I went to Georgetown University that they immediately said I had the taxia. Okay, so what is the first thing you did? <clears throat> Treatment-wise or physical therapy or what have you? What's the first thing? What's the... The first um, approach you took to try to do something about it. Because I didn't know what I had. I used the same concept or ideas that I learned when I broke my femur. I'm really more than that. But exercises that I did that I learned when I broke my femur and Went from there and started seeing you. Now, those exercises, when you first started, not me, but when you first started those things at home, did they seem to help any? Oh, yeah. For example, I started with the act of squat stretch, and that really helped me gain my balance. Not perfectly, but it was a start. Okay. And so you started seeing me. I started giving you personal training Monday, Wednesday, Friday, about an hour or so, a session. And you were doing things on your own in between. Did you notice, I don't want to say a big difference. Did you notice a jump in progress when you started training with me and doing things more often than instead, you know, instead of uh, just like kind of do like an approaching a trial and error or or no or did did things just steadily improve it it did improve little by little like i make so steady progress and then i got the first symptom treatment and that was a big jump and that started the carnivore diet which gave me another jump. And then I went for the second stem cell treatment, which hasn't been that long ago. And that gave me another jump. All right, hold up here. Hold up, hold up. Let's, let's get this timeline down then. I know we started training in January of 2023. So from the time we first started training, and we trained consistently. We didn't take any months off or anything. From from January of 2023, um, I think it was probably the summer of 2023, I started just, I actually just happened upon it. I wasn't looking for it, but I started researching different uh, methodologies and it happened upon the stem cell treatments. And then I recommended those to you and you started looking on your own and you came up with the R3 stem cell clinic now, from the time of January 2023, and we're working out the whole year. We've worked out nonstop since then. From the time we first started training till the time you got your first stem cell treatment, how long was that? Was it a year? What, um, eight months, yeah, ten it months? It was one year, almost exactly. Almost exactly from the first time we started training yeah. in January 2023 till you got the stem cells. So in that time, from January to your first stem cell treatment, I noticed uh, quite a bit of improvement for you. Uh, I think when I first saw you, you were walking with ski poles. You couldn't do walk up and down steps. You had to take the elevator. And you were very unbalanced. Correct. I couldn't even drive. And pretty much every doctor that I talked to said I would never drive. 
and I started driving before the Simpsons and going back to what all the doctors say, they all said, you can't do, you can't be active, you can't do whatever. And I didn't. So you have to stay positive and you have to push yourself. The problem is no one pushes herself because they're told not to. Yeah, I think uh, probably like a lot of things that people get, you know, it's like the person that we always reference where they get into, they have a spinal or brain injury and they tell them you never walk again and then they end up walking again. And I think a lot of people get the that like hopeless attitude. It's because you're crushed because you went from, you know, having these abilities to not having them. And it seems like such a daunting task, like how are you ever going to get back there? So they don't even start. But you had the right attitude. You started and you're, you had the attitude of, you know, well, it seemed like I'm going to get whatever I can get or see how see how good the sky's the limit, see how far I can go. Because you went pretty far that I could see improvement-wise, balance and coordination and abilities just with us training. And then when you got the stem cell treatment, you actually took a month off, give the stem cells time to work. And when you came back, you said you noticed a lot of, like a jump in, in a lot of different things. Yeah. It was like a marked improvement. Like I didn't expect it. But it, for me, it was almost instant. Now, from that first stem cell treatment. So we worked out for about a year. Um, we talked about stem cell treatments. I, I came upon the stem cell treatment thing. We talked, You and I talked about it with your dad probably for a few months before you actually did it. And then you did the stem cell treatments. That was the end of 2023. Then we started again, I think, in January of 2024. We started again. Well, I got my first treatment in January 2024. Oh, okay. So it wasn't December. Okay. No. So you got the first one in January 2024. <coughs> Excuse me. And started working out again a month later. Okay. And you noticed a big jump from that. And then, how long was it from January 2024, first stem cell treatment, to the second stem cell treatment? How long was that? Six months. Six months? Yeah. And you got a big jump from a big boost in performance from the first stem cell treatment. How about the second one? The second one wasn't as immediate, but definitely better when it has come to the perception that was immediate. That was immediate? Um, over time, right now, my balance has gotten significantly better. But to go back, and this is for everyone, to go back to my dad, um, he didn't want me in the wheelchair. He actually took the wheelchair away from me and uh, forced me to use a walker. And eventually, he took the walker away and took the walker to the dump. And that forced me to use his ski poles or walking poles for his sense. And then he took those away. So I forced me, and then you forced me to use the stairs instead of the elevator. Yeah. And that's what people need the most. Don't rely on something. You have to force yourself. Yeah, they don't, they're, there's a, like a mindset, like they don't, they think, they, they think or they've been told or both that they can't do something or they feel so dejected from being fully functional to having this happen to them that they don't even try. They don't challenge themselves. There's no challenge. Just like, you know. Um, all right. So trained for about a year, made, made marked improvements, slow but steady. And I knew that if you challenged your neuromuscular, your nervous system, balance, coordination, strengthen your body, 
that that would improve somewhat. To what extent? Didn't know. And then first stem cell treatment, and then a little bit more of a marked improvement. Still continue to train. Then the second stem cell treatment. So how how would you say? Like from the when you first started training with me through all that to now, do you feel like you've made great improvement? Oh, now I can definitely know that's it. If I go to past videos of myself, I just laugh at myself because I look horrible. And now I see a difference and feel a difference. At first it was very slow, but it was noticeable to other people. Not me per se, but to other people because usually it happens so slow. I don't know this as well as other people. Okay, well, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. Because um, a, lot a lot of times with anything, uh, we, you know, the changes in yourself are minute day to day, and you don't really think about them. But when you compare and contrast, like, where you came from, then you think, like, well, I have come a long way. You know, especially when, when the change, whatever it is, is slow, you tend to think, you know, that you're not really making progress. But it's just slow, but it's steady. But I think uh, with anything, people need to push themselves if there's no challenge, there's no real change. You're not really, you know, you're not really going to change. Um, you're not really going to adapt and grow. But you've achieved that first goal, which was driving, and that was within the first year. And then uh, you've just gotten better in every other thing. Oh, um, another thing I really have noticed because I've been having to sign my name all. Um, on the second treatment of the symptoms, it really has increased my writing ability to where I can actually write. Ah, you um, yeah, it's not perfect, but leaves and bounce better than what it was. Even it has gotten noticed by my neurologist. And she is dumbfounded. She is amazed. And has gotten to a point to where they now want me to go to Johns Hopkins to tell people about it. What I'm doing is actually working. When are you supposed to do that? I have no idea yet. Oh, they haven't set a specific time? No. All right. Well, that's awesome. Anything else to add? Um... Anything else you can think um, of? Yeah. I get this ass all the time. I heard stem cells don't work. That is because the stem cells that people are talking about are done in the U.S. The stem cells I am talking about are done abroad. Totally different. A different concept. NAF does not support these stem cells because it does not follow their guidelines. They will not allow it. They will not endorse it. So sometimes you, you have to go not exactly what they say. They're going to push everything for what their donors give. Their donors are the disability company. So, for example, they're going to push a wheelchair or these adaptive equipment or items. They're not going to push cures. They're only going to push for something that pays their bills. Sounds like uh, the medical community in general. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is there anything else you can think of? Oh, two more things. After actually this is part of both stem cell treatments, and I didn't go for this, 
The first was to help my asthma. I was using my inhaler almost once a day. Now I've only since January. I had to use it a handful of times, and you can attest to that. I was just thinking, um, I know, especially when we would run, run the prowler, the sled, you might have to sometimes stop and, and, and uh, hit the inhaler. But I've noticed since we've been working out now, probably after the first uh, stem cell treatment, I never really took much notice of it. I just noticed that, well, I did kind of notice that you weren't using it as much, if at all. But I just didn't think about it. Yeah, but now you don't really, I haven't really seen you use it at all. Yeah, and to be honest, I didn't even. Now, hold on, hold on. Would you, would you think that's, would you say that was after the first stem cell treatment or six months later after the second one? It was after the first treatment and it continued and got better after the second. And after the first, I didn't even notice it. I did, well, didn't even know I wasn't using it. It wasn't until you brought it up that I said to myself, oh, that's right. I'm not using it. And another thing, after my second treatment and I didn't see a three for this at all, I started going to physical therapy for my rhomboids. Because my rumbles have been hurting me ever since I got in the head on collision when I was 19. And after go going for my second treatment and then going back to physical therapy, my physical therapist said something has happened, but she didn't know what. But I can tell you, it's more flexible, right? What happened is my rhomboids would be so tight, this would be really hard. You couldn't put your head down? No, but no, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm fine, but a lot better. And this, I didn't go for this. It just so happened how. Well, I know <laughs> I'm starting to believe based on uh, what we've been documenting and doing the, the combination of the training, working out, and the stem cell treatments is a lot better. The sum of both is way better than either one individually. Obviously, working out will help anybody with just about anything to some extent. And the stem cell treatments will help just about anybody that I can think of, any any condition that I'm aware of, to a certain extent. But I think the combination of the two is way better than either one individually. I think that's what uh, that's how we can help people. You know, designing exercise training programs for people, and then you know encouraging them. Obviously, it can be a time thing. It can be a thing with just sheerly with finances. Um, because, you know, we're recommending people go abroad, not here in the United States. And here is the real, the real kicker is that if a person was to get stem cell treatments here in the United States, they may help a little, I'm sure they'll help some, but the, but the, the effects that you get from the treatments abroad are just magnified so much that you can't even compare them. You can't even compare the effects That'll be a little bit from the stem cell treatments you get here in the United States to the effects that you'll get from the stem cell treatments abroad. They're just so far apart. The stem cell treatments abroad are so better. I hate to say that, but I don't know how how, how to say that in any other way. They're, they're so much better. They're so much, they, the effects are magnified so much that if I had my choice, I would never get them here. I would just go abroad. You know, and I know it's just because of stupid regulations. You know, it's not that they couldn't do them here, but stupid regulations, uh, you know, tie the hands of doctors here. That's why most of the doctors that you see, and this isn't, this is true. This is not, you know, me just saying it. Most of the doctors that you see abroad that are doing stem cell treatments, 
are doctors from the United States that go and set up yeah. clinics elsewhere because yeah. what you can't do it here. Their their hands are tied. The way that they know that's effective, they 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 can't do it. And it's not like it's some unethical, immoral, illegal thing. It's just because of regulations being what they are, they can't. I think it's a culture, the stem cells yeah. that they use from umbilical cord that they can't they can't culture them here, and that that kind of hamstrings the doctor in the procedure. So, and a lot of times they use the, they use a patient's own stem cells from the iliac crest, I believe, is where they get them from, from the bone marrow or, or the, or fat. And that's just not as effective. It pretty much all boils down to money. And unfortunately, the U.S. wants more money, so they don't approve it. They would rather sell people medication and whatever else and make them a lifelong patient. Well, sure. That's why things like stem cell therapy, been around for 30 years, 50 years, however long here in the United States, but that's not an avenue that they develop because the drugs are already developed and they're making a ton of money off of it, yeah. a ton of money. So they don't want to – anything – if you look at it, Anything that the medical industry can make money off of, it's promoted, it's researched, it's developed. And things that can't make money off of, they can't make money off of, they're just kind of pushed to the side. You know, even though they might be effective, they might be an effective treatment, they might, some of them might be a cure, but they don't, they don't mess with that. They don't, they don't bother with that. That's why things that are considered holistic medicine homeopathic, th those things aren't, they're not researched and they're not aggressively developed because there isn't as much money and there's already money in things like surgeries, yeah. um, petroleum-based medicine, oh. where, you know, those kind of things are developed and there's a lot of money to be made. There's a lot of money made from them. So that's what's pushed. Yeah. Speaking about money and surgery. When Dr. Sean Baker got his license revoked, his doctor license, because a lot of their treatment or a lot of his, you know, his surgeries can be fixed through diet. That's why he promotes the carnivore diet. And because of that, he was giving his patients recommendations to go on the carnivore diet and got his license revoked because the hospital that he was working for said we only pay you for surgeries so do more surgeries yeah he was uh as i understand it i saw an interview with him i think it was on joe rogan's podcast he was saying that uh yeah, they weren't. They, he wasn't being paid to give dietary advice. He was being paid to to do orthopedic surgeries because he was an orthopedic surgeon. And uh, but you know, I think he went back, went through the ch proper channels. I think he got his license back. I'm pretty sure he did. You know, because they said you can't you can't revoke the man's license for that. That's that's crazy. You know, it's crazy that it's crazy though that uh, that would even be a thought that a doctor's license might be in jeopardy to practice medicine or surgery in a hospital because he's curing patients and it's not with uh, the conventional surgery. And it's not that there are instances where you would need orthopedic surgery, surgeries, of course, but to, to not pursue the avenue of dietary intervention, and that could be, you know, that could be a remedy for certain patients um, problems other than surgery. But at the end of the day, I heard it said like this, at the end of the day, a hospital is a business. Yeah. And they're not in the business of, you know, not making money. They, they, they want to stay in, they want to stay in business. So, you know, I guess driving around your BMWs and Lexus <laughs> costs money. Getting that new boat costs money. So it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. All the stuff that goes on. That shouldn't go on, but you, most people, I'm not going to just keep going on and on, but most people tend to have a mentality 
that they think industries and businesses like, like a hospital or doctors, they across the board without thinking, think that they're, or they can, they assume that they're all benevolent, you know, that they just have good intentions and they wouldn't do that. Their bottom line wouldn't be money. And why not? Sure it is that, you know, scientists, scientists wouldn't lie to you. Why? Scientists often get grant money by towing a party line, by getting, by producing a certain result. You know, so a lot of times their 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 data, their research is skewed toward that result. So you know, it doesn't doesn't surprise me. You, yeah. you think anything else? Uh, not at the moment. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll give you an honest answer. Before we wrap up.